Hi, my name is Patrick, but you can call me 26. And what we're going to do today is we are going to learn about how you can use Combine and your Swift UI app to make API calls, right? So like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get into the action. Now, our app is going to be pretty simple. What we're going to do is we are going to hit the, or we are going to use the Rick and Morty API. And for now, it's just since it's just for illustrative purposes, we're just going to get the API that lists the various characters. And we're going to create this list of the characters from Rick and Morty, right? So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so for the particular API, we're going to go to the documentation and we're interested in the rest, uh, rest endpoint. And we want the characters, right? So you're going to get the base URL is going to be Rick and Morty app slash API. Then you're going to get characters, right? So if you write, if you get that and you get the entire, the base URL plus uh, the endpoint that you're currently interested in, uh, which is in our case, we want the Rick, um, Rick and Morty uh, API character. If you take that, put it in your browser, what you're going to get is going to be this object, right? Now this particular object is going to be pretty difficult to read. And what we could do is we could come here, get all of it, make sure you get all of it, right? Okay, it's gonna be a bit, okay, just hit command A, copy it like so. Come to this uh, website called JSON Formatter. Now JSON Formatter will allow you to see the data a bit better. So you could come here, get rid of this, paste it here, right? And then we are going to say format JSON like so. And now when you hit format JSON, you're going to get this um, the results in this format, which is going to be a bit better for you to read, easier for you to read because it's a bit more structured. So what we have is we have this outer object, right? It's JSON, so the O in JSON stands for object. So we have this particular object and in it, we have a couple of results. We have the info, which contains more information about the results, which itself is an object, right? But we're not interested in that. What you're particularly interested in is this array that is called results right here, right? So this array has, um, within it, an array of various characters, right? So we have the first one called Rick Sanchez, his status, his species, his type, his gender, where he lives. Okay, his origin, where he was, his from rather, his location, his image, which we are going to use. The episodes he appears in, um, the URL, I'm guessing, which is a, um, a URL to this, and then uh, when it was created, right? And then we have the next character, which is going to be Morty Smith, his ID, all his information, right? So we're going to be interested in two things here. We're going to be interested in the ID so that it can be identifiable for use in our list. And also we're going to be interested in their image, right? So we get the image from the image in here, which is going to be the image here, right? The one with the JPEG. And also, of course, we need their name, right? So those are the three things we're particularly interested in. But in order to get to that, we first have to destructure it by getting to, uh, we first have to destructure it so that we can get to the inner object, right? So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that and we can have access to all this object. So we just have the usual startup and what we want to do is we need to create a new group. So let's come here and make a new group. It's going to be called model like so. Come here, select that, hit command N, create a new file. This is going to be a Swift file. This is just going to be a model for characters. So we're going to say something like character, character, right? Like so hit create. And what we're going to do here is we are going to have the character, right? The model of the character. Now, what we are but in particular we're interested in, we are interested in the ID, the name, and the image, right? So let's have a look at that. That's going to be struct. This is going to be character. Okay, spell it correctly. Or if you spell it incorrectly, make sure you keep it like that. And it's going to conform to codable. And what that means is if you put codable, it means it can be decoded and encoded into JSON, right? So we put codable, although you strictly don't need to do um codable you could just use uh decodable right because you're not going to be encoding it into um json right because we are not making uh we're not going to be sending the data anywhere right so we could just use codable or if you want to be explicit use decodable but i'm going to leave it as that and because you're going to be essentially using it in a list at some point we should have identifiable right and identifiable is pretty simple to uh, conform to what it requires us to have is going to be to have an ID, right? So we're going to have let ID and ID is going to be of type in integer and we're going to have a look at that in a bit. Then we're going to say let name, let name and name is going to be a string. And after that, we're going to say let image and image is going to be of type URL, right? So that's where the image is going to come from. Now, now supposing you had, um, 
supposing you had a name like the name was formatted in such a way that was slightly different from the name that you wanted to call it for your particular struct right in that case you would use something like a an enum right you'd come here and say private enum and this is going to be something like coding enum is going to be coding keys like so and this one is going to be string and it's going to be coding key right coding key like so and you come here and then uh, you're going to have the case for the name and then you're going to say the name is going to be something like here it's going to be name underscore us so that you tell that you tell it that the the name or rather the character um the character here does not exactly look like the properties of the character here do not exactly look like the properties in the json right but since in our case all the names conform um, all the properties conform to what is used in the JSON. We can we don't have to use the coding keys. So this is something that you should uh, have at the back of your mind. Do it. Now the next thing we need to do is um, if we come here and look at this object, you will notice that the object is made up of um, the results is made up of an array of the particular characters, right? So when we actually fetch the data, it's going to come as this object. But what we are really interested in is going to be the array and the results. So let's get let's deal with that. So how we deal with that is let's come back here. Let's come here and say something like struct and this is going to be character response like so and say codable like so and then we're going to say let results um um let's come here and say character like so right so we're going to have that then we're going to have our results and then it's going to be character so basically that that's how we're going to get the data and we're going to fetch it it's going to be like that and now what we need to do is we need to figure out um the networking the networking uh functionality that we're going to have right so we come here and we create a new group and this is going to be uh, we need a new group first right so we come here and we say new group like so a new group is going to be called services although this is a small app so you might not want to put it in a new group but we could do that it's going to be a new swift file come here do that and this is going to be called a uh, networking service like so hit that come here and then we're going to have this data here what you're going to do next is we're going to import and what do we want to import okay spell it correctly import combine right we need combine that's what you're going to use right now what one thing we're going to do is uh just for ease we're going to use the observable network to keep track of the characters that are fetched right uh you could do this without using observable but i'm just going to do it with observable uh but the api is going to be fetched using combine right so we come here and we say obs at observable and then we say class the class in question is going to be network service networking service or whatever we call it right and we come here and what we would like to do is um we need an array of characters right and observable just stops us from having to use publish right it saves us on the number of keystrokes we might have to make right now characters is going to be an array and it's going to be filled what's it going to be filled with character right and it's going to start off it's going to be empty so we do that and then afterwards we're going to have a function um before that we could have our set of subscriptions and that's going to be subscriptions like so and this is going to be set and this is going to be uh we come here and we say any cancelable like so come here do that that's going to be this and what we're going to do with the with that is if i could quickly explain this is just a set to store combine subscriptions uh so that we can manage them later right so that's just going to be a set that we can use to do that and um the next thing would be to create the function that is going to do all this right that's going to be called funk it's going to be called fetch characters or you could give it whatever name you want right that's going to be fetch characters like so come here and what do we want we want the url so we say first you're going to say god let url and this is just going to be url like so url and it needs a string so what's the string like so the string can be gotten from we could go back and um let's see it's actually this just character right so we could copy this let's just copy this drop the page and whatnot or just get it from um the the api or you could actually copy it from here right so what we need is going to be uh rick and morty uh api 
slash character, right? That's all we need for our string. And we say that, and then we say else, uh, we're going to return, right? So that's going to be returned like so. Then you're going to call the URL session like so. And we're going to say shared, and we say data task, uh, data task publisher, right? That's the one we want for combine. And that's going to be four, it needs a URL, and luckily we have one here, right? And now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to map the data, dot map, like so, dot map, and what we want to map, we could say with the uh, key path, we could say this is going to be zero dot data. What this is going to do is just going to unwrap the data from the response, right? And after we do that, uh, it's complaining that the result is not used, we could come here and say dot decode, uh, decode, like so, and this is going to be the type we want to decode from is going to be um, character response dot self and the decoder we're just going to use the JSON decoder right JSON decoder like so we say uh, come here say receive on that's going to be dispatch Q spell it correctly dispatch Q dot main that's going to be receiving it on the we switch to the main thread to receive it right and then we're going to call sync like so like so and we hit enter here and what we could do here is just switch this to call it something like completion uh, in this closure in and what we could do here is we're going to have a switch statement and we say switch like so and you're going to have a switch and it's going to be on the completion like so and um we're going to have the case uh where it's going to be um dot failure if there's any failure we're just going to come here and we say let's get that we say let error like so and for now what you're going to do is just print it right let's come here and we say print like so and this is just going to be the error we say error the localized description you're not going to do much with it right and there's another case we're needing um the other case we could uh fix and that's going to be case finished right and here we're just going to uh, again not do anything meaningful but just print if it works out print data fetched right come here say data fetched right so that will mean that the data has been fetched successfully um, when it finishes and uh, the receive value is going to be decoded data come here say decoded uh, data in like so and here we're just going to say self dot characters that's going to be the characters that we created up here. And uh, that's going to be gotten from, we say decode data dot results. So we get the the array that we, we receive of results and we put them into this array of characters, right? And we need somewhere to store them in, right? So after that, what we are going to have is going to be, um, uh, let's see, we're going to come here and we say uh, dot store dot store in and that's going to be our subscription set right so we store them in our subscription set and that's going to be all we need for in particular for our networking service so that is um if i'm not wrong i believe the heavy work done now let's just create the ui elements and connect and see if everything works out now the next thing we need to do is let's create a row that is going to contain all the information about our character that comes back right it's going to be easier for us and we're just going to come here and hit command n and this is going to be a swift ui view like so come here and it's going to be called character row right and we got this we don't really need a preview it's just going to be pretty straightforward. What it's going to do is it's going to receive a character. So we come here and we say var character, and the character is going to be of type character, like so. And what it's going to have here is it's going to have a hashtag where they sit the name and the image sit side by side. So we're going to come here and say async image, and uh, the URL can be gotten from the character. So we say character dot image, like so. And we come here and we say what's this going to be? It's going to be the image in like so. And we're just going to come here and we say image and we come here and we say dot resizable dot resizable. Okay, why does it go image dot image? Um, we just need resizable like so, right? So we want resizable and then we want the clip shape come here, say clip shape. Um, these are just cosmetic stuff. It's nothing important rounded rectangle with the corner radius and what's the corner radius 
is going to be corner radius in style, right? That's going to be 2, 5, like so. This is going to be dot continuous, right? Dot continuous, and um, we need a frame for it. Uh, that's going to be dot frame, like so. That's going to be the width, like so. It's going to be um, 100 by a height, uh, a height of 100, right? And then we're going to come here and we say we need a placeholder right and the placeholder is just going to be a progress view right so just keep the spinning circle while it's not yet there and while you're there but still within the h stack we need the name and where do we get the name we can get that from the text and this is just going to be from the character dot name right it has a name like so right so that's going to be our row that we're going to use and this is pretty um, this is pretty standard and straightforward and now the next thing we need to do is uh, on the view that is called we need to use this particular row and so that uh, yeah so that we reduce the amount of code we write on that particular section Indeed. now the next thing we need to do is we need to come to the content view and in the content view what we want to do here is we're just going to get the uh, the networking service so we just say uh, var let's say let's call it vm and this is going to be net working service right so we have that and we could come here ditch the padding get rid of this and in our v stack we just want to have a list and in the list in particular we're going to get the characters from vm dot characters like so and then we're going to come here and in this closure we're going to say character character in like so and then we're going to pass in the character row so it's a character row, it requires a character. And what do you know, we have a character right there and we want to call this on appearance of the VStack. So we come here and we say dot on appear like so. And in this closure, what we're going to do is we're just going to say VM dot fetch characters, right? And if we're lucky, we should see it here, right? So we actually get this running like so. And if we want to see it in particular, we could just run this and see it on a device, right? So let's just do that. But it actually works, right? So we get this and we actually see it on the device and it takes a bit of time to get some of them. And I, it looks like Antenna Rick doesn't have a photo, but these others take a bit of time, right? Now that's how you would actually uh, fetch data with Combine, right? You just call the, you create the set of cancelables, put that there, call, um, use subscribers and um, get the sync to receive them on and then finally just uh, fetch the data and connect it to your view right it's pretty straightforward um, yeah so thank you for watching like the video subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one